Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colleges That Change Lives virtual college fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening today and tomorrow, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions after this. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash ctcl. Our order for our presenters this evening are going to be Birmingham Southern College, Center College, uh, Emory and Henry College, and Millsaps College. Before they get started, we are going to watch a quick video um, from Colleges That Changed Lives. So we will get that started for you before our presenters go. Good evening. My name is Christine Bowman and I serve as the chair of the Board of Directors of Colleges That Change Lives. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to our event tonight, and I hope you enjoy engaging over the next two days with our member institutions to learn more about who we are and the exciting opportunities available at our institution. As an organization, Colleges That Change Lives is a 5013C nonprofit that is dedicated to the advancement and support of a student-centered college admission process. We support the goal of each student finding a college that develops a lifelong love of learning and provides a foundation for a successful and fulfilling life beyond college. In addition, we push back on the media frenzy that surrounds college admission. We help families de-stress the process and really hope that you will enjoy getting to know institutions and a little bit more about yourself. We want you to look beyond the rankings to see that each college has unique attributes and values that can help you grow and learn in your college experience. We believe in the liberal arts and we speak to the benefits of this type of learning in the college environment. And most importantly, as an organization, we support our member institutions in their activities to successfully welcome students to their college every semester. As an organization, we are 44 member colleges proud, 42 of us are private, and two are public liberal arts and sciences institutions. We are located in 25 states and have an average enrollment of just over 1,500 students. Now you may be asking, what is the liberal arts and why should I look at this type of learning in my college search process? Well, the liberal arts are neither about politics nor specifically about fine arts. The term arts is used in the sense of learning across multiple disciplines. And here we're talking about the natural sciences, the social sciences, the fine arts and the humanities. And within liberal arts colleges, traditionally what you will find is the opportunity to deep dive into a core curriculum of interdisciplinary courses and learning. You will traditionally find small discussion-based courses and classrooms. Professors who teach or when they research choose to engage their students in their research opportunities. Institutions that provide opportunities beyond just the in-class learning experience, things like study abroad, internships, community-engaged learning, and research are all ways in which students can grow and learn. And finally, liberal arts colleges often provide the opportunity to pursue multiple majors, interdisciplinary majors, or paired majors for that student that has more than one passion that they just don't want to give up. And this is really important because we believe that the liberal arts is an education for a lifetime. Outside of the class or in conjunction with your classroom learning, we know that at a liberal arts institution, you're also going to develop these important skills, creative thinking, interdisciplinary thinking, communication skills, both written and verbalizing, working with small groups and large groups, solving complex problems, as well as developing leadership skills and the ability to be a supporter in a journey for all individuals. And while in the beginning this might not seem important, as you continue in your life, 
this shows an incredible amount of influence because these are the skills that employers are looking for and endorse when they are thinking about hiring individuals. So the Association of the American Colleges and Universities worked with a broad group of employers to try to ascertain what is really important in the individuals that you hire. And it was resounding that of the skills that rose to the top, many of these were not specific to a major or to a, a particular trade, but were really encouraging people to develop lifelong skills that could be required and used across multiple disciplines. Things like we just talked about, communication skills, problem solving, creativity. The reason why is employers can teach you how to um, have knowledge about the business, but they can't teach you these skills on the spot. And when they're looking to hire, these are very important competencies that they are looking for in the individuals that they interview and ultimately make offers to. So we believe that this is an enhancement to the liberal arts degree, is that it not only teaches you knowledge, but it helps you have these skills that can take you not only into your first job, but to jobs further on down the line. Sometimes a private school investment makes individuals a little nervous, and we understand that price tag may look large, but the return on investment can be incredible. And the Georgetown University Center on Education and the Workforce shows that the return on investment for liberal arts education is nearly $200,000 higher than the median for all colleges. And that that 40 year return on investment over a lifetime of employment, the return on liberal arts institution is close to those of engineering schools as well as business schools. So you don't have to attend one of those specific institutions to see a lifelong uh, opportunity for engaged learning, engaged contributions to the community and a return on investment. So I hope this information is helpful for you as you begin your journey over the next uh, couple of evenings. If you would like to learn more about Colleges That Change Lives and our member institutions, we hope you'll visit our webpage and know that we have recently updated to add a college search feature amongst our institutions. So if you're looking for a specific major, um, opportunity to participate in athletics or a particular region of the country, we have a way in which you can get to know us better. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. So I hope you all enjoyed our little introductory video. And now I'm gonna pass it over to our first presenter for this evening, and that is Birmingham Southern College. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sydney Sullen and I am an admissions counselor here at Birmingham Southern College. Super excited to be talking to you guys today, a little bit about BSC. Um, so of course, the reason why we're here at this virtual fair is just to talk about the CTCL schools. Birmingham Southern specifically is a relatively small school. We have about 1,300 students on this campus, and they're coming from 31 different states and 18 countries, which means you're more than likely going to learn alongside someone that's not from the same state as you. Um, you'd be surprised about you know, the differences from someone that may live in Alabama to Texas to California. Um, we also believe that we're pretty diverse here at Birmingham Southern, um, and we want to create a diverse learning environment for our students, just because when you go out into the workforce, you're going to be in a diverse population. So what better way to prepare our students for that is to get them plugged in in that diverse opportunity and environment in college. Um, and just like the CTCL video stated, um, our curriculum at Birmingham Southern is, is different. It's going to be focusing on um, skill sets that employers are looking for, like the skill sets that are listed here. Um, so in our curriculum, we have effective communication, creative problem solving, civic engagement, um, the ability to connect one idea to central ideas, and self-directed teaching and learning. Uh, it breaks it down in our creative problem solving unit under QA. The obvious choice for QA would be to take a math class, but um, because of our curriculum, our students have the choice of avoiding a math class, but still taking a class that fulfills that requirement. And that's uh, it's how it goes for the rest of our curriculum at BSC. We have 50 defined areas of studies, our majors, minors, and distinctions. Uh, the most popular majors and programs that we have are the ones that are highlighted. 
business, education, pre-health, pre-law, and psychology. Um, but we're always looking to adapt and add new majors and programs to our college. Um, and if you don't see a major or program on here that you're interested in, no worries. Don't think, oh no, I, I can't look at BSC anymore. And um, we have the ability to contract majors, which means you can talk to someone in our Kulak entities um, and develop and create your own major. Really cool opportunities that we um, are allowing for our students. And a little bit about our, our classroom sizes. So we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio, which means there's going to be 12 students, about 12 students in your class with one professor. So it's really gonna be easy for you to raise your hand, ask questions, um, be seen, heard, and challenged. The average class size is about 16. So that might be um, the size of your high school now, maybe a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, but it's gonna be the right and perfect size for you to be able to you know, not only communicate with your professor, but also communicate with your peers, um, check in with them, say, hey, let's do homework, or can we save this test? You're not going to feel like a big, um, like a small fish in, in a big sea. You're, you're going to feel comfortable um, in the learning environment that you're in. And uh, something that kind of makes us special is that we have an E-term. So students are going to be on a 414 schedule, which means they take four classes in the fall, one in January and then four in the spring. Now, the one in January is called expiration term or E-term. During that time, our students focus on one experience for the whole month of January. So if you have friends that are in college now, uh, after Christmas break, they went back to school. Well, at BSC, after Christmas break, you're not gonna go back to school. You're gonna go off on your E-term. And um, our students do really fun, exciting things. They might go, go off to Uganda and teach. Um, they might serve the homeless in San Francisco. For students that are looking for an opportunity Opportunity on campus and if, if they don't want to you know leave Birmingham um, they can do something fun like a southern cooking class where they can eat food and make food uh, they can produce a play in just three weeks really fun opportunities uh, sometimes these e-terms have nothing to do with your major um, they're completely unrelated uh, in some cases you can find an e-term that relates with your major this is also a great time to plug in an internship or if you're looking to go into medical school or law school a great time to study for that big exam. Um, all students are required to do at least two E-terms while they're here, um, but some students choose to do one all four years because it's plugged into your tuition, so why not? Uh, we are a, uh, a big residential college. Uh, we really thrive on community here at Birmingham Southern. About 80% of our students live on the hilltop all four years. Uh, we do have a three-year housing requirement, which means that you are going to be required to stay on campus for three years. When you're a senior, you can live off campus, but most times our students decide just to stay on campus anyway. Um, if you're interested in seeing more of our residence life, uh, feel free to go to our admissions page on our Instagram, BSC Admission, to watch a story highlight of us going into those residence halls, and we also have some reels as well. Uh, so even though we're a small school, we have a lot of student organizations, over 80. Uh, our most popular is our Student Programming Board and our SGA. They put on fun events for our students on campus and off of campus. Um, we have a Birmingham Barons team here, which is a minor league baseball team. Sometimes our student orgs give free tickets to our students so they can check out the baseball game, tickets to see the movies. Uh, so we're always looking to provide opportunities for our students to kind of have fun and engage on campus and off of campus as well. And we're also an athletic school. So we are part of NCAA Division III Athletics. We have 22 athletic teams here on this campus. Swimming, diving, lacrosse, football, volleyball, basketball, you name it, we probably have it. Uh, our student athletes do very well in the classroom and on the field, and they have an average GPA of about a 3.0. And then a little bit about Birmingham. So we believe that Birmingham is um, our backyard. So if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a bell tower. That is actually our campus. And then the back is downtown Birmingham. So when we say Birmingham's our backyard, we mean it. Our students can access downtown Birmingham within five minutes. Um, they can go shopping, they can eat, they can check out a concert. There's always things to do in Birmingham every day, every weekend. Um, we're definitely not like a suitcase college where you go on campus Monday through Friday and they're gonna go home. Our students don't wanna go home. They wanna stay in Birmingham and, and get involved in the community that Birmingham has to offer. So there's three ways to apply. We're on the BSC online application. We're on the Common app and also the Coalition app. It's important to know that our online application is free. 
Uh, we have two application pathways. Our students can apply standard and uh, they can also apply test optional. Um, you see those requirements listed here. If you're a student and you feel like your test score just doesn't um, you know, reflect you as a student, know that you can apply test optional and you're still eligible for scholarships. And so this is our scholarship grid. Um, so this should be the same for the class of 2022 or the seniors that are 22 seniors and moving forward. But this is just to give you an idea of what you can expect um, you might get in scholarships. It's important to note that every student that is admitted to Birmingham Southern will receive an academic scholarship. So know that if you in, you are guaranteed a merit scholarship. Uh, and that is all I have for you guys today. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at BSC Admission. Remember, you can go there to watch some story highlights of housing uh, and some reels and check out what student life looks like at BSC. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney. Next up, we are going to go to our second school of the evening, and that is Center College. All right, thank you so much for having us. We are from Center College um, and we're so excited to get to meet you tonight. My name is Lauren Samuelson. I'm Assistant Director of Admission um, and I'll kick it off and I'll have Adrian introduce yourself when we get to see you next. Um, just a quick glimpse into Center. We're gonna kind of just give you some highlights about um, what makes us unique and special. Um, and Adrian and I are both graduates, so we'll probably tie in some of our own experience too. But uh, if you're not familiar with Center, Center is um, located in right in the center of Kentucky. That's actually how we got our name. Um, center has about 1,400 students. We're about 50-50 when it comes to in-state and out-of-state students. We're also 50-50 when it comes to female and male students based on how they identify. Um, and we've got students really coming from all over the world and the country to come and be in the center of Kentucky. We're located in Danville. Danville was recently ranked the most beautiful small city in Kentucky. Um, our downtown area, downtown Danville district is right off of campus. You can walk downtown um, in so I, Adriana and I are both not from Kentucky. I'm from Florida and Adriana is from California and have come to call Kentucky home. Um, and it's really just the center of so many things in the U.S. And Danville really matches the vibe of center, which is very warm, welcoming, inviting. Um, it really is a beautiful, wonderful place to go to school. And so um, we're just excited to introduce you more to center as we go on. But I'll pass it over to Adriana. Thanks, Lauren. So let's talk a little bit about the academic environment at Center. So when I think about the Center classroom, I think of a classroom that is really small, but also a classroom that's really collaborative. Um, students and faculty at Center come together, collaborate within the liberal arts and sciences, and they're always thinking about how they can use knowledge to really move the world forward. Um, when you're actually in a classroom, an average class at Center has about 18 students. You'll never have a class of more than 30, um, and all of our professors are experts in their field. So you're getting to do high-level academic work. Um, um, the classroom environment at Center is certainly rigorous, but I do think of Center as a place of really great balance. So you can expect an educational experience at Center um, that's rigorous yet supported, one of challenge balanced by comfort, and for your fellow students to find accomplishment and a job well done without having any sort of cutthroat competition. Um, in a lot of ways, I think that our name Center is really serendipitous because it does really reflect that kind of balance that the center community really embraces. If you are curious about the kinds of academic programs that we have at Center, this has a very brief overview. There are some programs that are missing from this list. So for example, we just added a really wonderful business major that works in collaboration with a new Center Works program, which is a um, social entrepreneurship uh, program that we have with downtown Danville that students get to do some meaningful work. Um, but I would really encourage you to check out the center website. There's some really great information about our programs, some great listing about the kind of courses, and some really great information about the kind of work that our professors are doing. Awesome. Thanks so much. And we'll just kind of switch gears over here and talk a little bit more about student life. Um, and I love these photos because I think they just show through the different seasons of Center, how fun and vibrant student life is. Um, I loved being a Center student. I love now getting to work with Center students, and I think they're just 
the best people ever. I'm obviously very biased, but um, at Center, we're truly a residential campus. We do have 98 to 99% of our campus that lives on campus all four years. Um, and so when Adriana and I came across the country to come to Center, it really did become home. You know, we lived here, we ate here, slept here, went to class here. Um, the people I graduated with, I do consider to be like family. Um, and what's great about a community like Center is that you really just get to be together and share these really special experiences. So there's over 2,000 campus events a year, over, I think, 89 different clubs and organizations. So there's always something fun to get involved with and um, learn about. Expo is a great thing that we have during the first week of class where you can go and sign up for like every club and find out about those. And then in our dining hall, we have banners that are sheets of paper and um, we use big fabric pieces um, to advertise campus events. Um, and that's a great way to go and find out about all of those. So this is another great slide to learn more about involvement. Um, and I think it really shows you what a center student looks like, which means they don't all look the same. They're very multifaceted and that our students love to be involved in all of our areas of campus. I think that is a really huge benefit of being a small liberal arts college is that you can truly do it all. Um, that was a huge reason I wanted to go to a smaller school. And I, you know, I went to a large public high school and knew I wanted to be at a smaller place because I want, didn't want to just be known as the athlete or just as a sorority girl. I wanted to do all these different things like service and be involved with my social community and also to give back. And so um, that was something I loved about Center is that I feel like I had like 10 different identities. It wasn't just one, but this is a great slide because you can see a lot of our students are involved in the arts. We do have the Norton Center for the Arts on campus, which brings in Broadway shows, plays, events. We did host the 2000 and 2012 Vice Presidents for Debates in that building. Um, and we have a bunch of different like concerts and shows that you get to go to throughout the year for free, which is really cool. We also have the Jones Visual Arts Center, which you can see it's glass filling on the right. We do have things like drawing, painting, ceramics. And um, I think it's just a really great example of the different courses you get to take in the liberal arts background. I was a history major, but I took ceramics, took French. You know, I took all these different courses that really impacted my career path and who I wanted to become that were so different than my major too, which is cool. Athletics is also a big part of our campus culture. I talked about how I was an athlete. That was the thing that drew me to center. About 40% of our students on campus are involved with our D3 athletics. What I loved about being a center fan and an athlete is that you really just get to support your friends um, on and off their fields and courts and they are your classmates, roommates, um, and it's really fun on a Saturday or Sunday to jump around campus and support all of our campus in this way. So it's really fun too. One thing that I have always really appreciated about Center is really the emphasis that the campus community has on giving students really transformative experiences. Um, one of the ways that we're able to do that is through what we call the Center Commitment, which is really a guarantee that we have for every single student that walks through our door. So they're guaranteed to one, graduate with research or internship experience, second, to study abroad, and then third, to graduate in four years. Um, for us, I think it's important to send really intellectually curious students to engage a global world in these really immersive and transformative learning experiences. Um, one of the things that we're really known for nationally is our study abroad program. Um, it's consistently ranked in the top five programs in the nation. And part of it is because of the quality of the programs that we're able to provide for students, but also the extremely high rates at which we're able to send students. So 83% of center students will go abroad with us at least once. Um, about 33 to 35% of students will go abroad two or more times. And all of our semester long experiences have no additional cost for students other than a plane ticket. And so not only are they getting really amazing experiences, but every student is able um, to access these experiences at pretty equal rates. Um, and lastly, we did want to talk a little bit about some of the scholarship opportunities available at Center. Um, every single scholarship opportunity that you see here is available for students, whether they submit a test score or not. Um, we are test optional for students that apply to Center. Um, but one thing that we are um, somewhat unique in is the number of um, full tuition and full cost scholarship opportunities that we have available for students. So there are 
three big premier scholarship programs that we run out of our own house, um, the Brown Fellows Program, the Grissom Scholars Program, and the Lincoln Scholars Program. All three of those programs have uh, mentorship experiences. Students get some really great funded enrichment experiences as well. And then we also have two partnerships with the Posse Foundation. Um, we have one partnership with um, the Posse Office in Boston. And then we also just started a new cohort with um, the Virtual Posse, which is a national Posse program in your city, um, maybe one of the cities that we may be working with um, in the new national Posse. So it's definitely something to check out. And I'll wrap us up. Thank you so much for having us. Make sure to follow us at Admission Center on social media to keep up with us as well. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you both. And students, don't forget to utilize that Q&A with any questions you have to any of our panelists. Next up, we are going to go to Emory and Henry College. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Rachel Campbell, and in addition to being one of the admissions counselors for Emory and Henry College, I am also an alumni of the college. So any questions that you may have at any point during or after this presentation, please don't hesitate to put them into that Q&A because I am more than happy to answer anything. Like all of our schools so far, Emory and Henry is a smaller school. We typically have a little over 1,200 students with just under a thousand of those being our undergraduate students on our main Emory and Henry campus. But we do also offer graduate level programs. So there are typically just under 300 graduate level students on campus as well. We do have a 10 to one faculty student ratio. So there are smaller classes. The biggest class you'll ever sit in tends to be around 25 to 30 students with your smallest class as you get into junior and senior year, typically being only in the 10 or even five student range. Emory and Henry offers over 80 academic majors, minors, and programs to choose from, and over 70 different student organizations, including club sports, as well as other clubs and organizations. Emory and Henry does have the most award-winning faculty among all Virginia colleges. So if you are looking at both small and large colleges in the state of Virginia, just know that Emory and Henry's faculty, in spite of our small size, do actually beat out all of those bigger schools on the number of awards that they have won. Emory and Henry, because of our small size, does offer the opportunity for every student to study away, get involved both on campus and in the local community, work with professors on research, as well as do work experience and internships throughout their programs. This is just a small sampling of those 80 different majors and minors that I mentioned. Some of those most popular do tend to be things like biology, our new business administration degree in our new school of business, psychology, engineering science, as well as the pre-health and exercise science majors. I did mention Emory and Henry does have several graduate level programs, and this is our School of Health Sciences in Marion, which is just up the road from the main campus. And this is home to our graduate level programs, including our Master of Physician Assistants, Master of Occupational Therapy, Doctorate of Physical Therapy, RN to BSN program, as well as our new Master of Science in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. And many of these programs have direct pathways from the undergraduate through the graduate level programs. Emory and Henry does also offer an equestrian team for those students who are interested in riding, but we do also offer equine studies degrees along with our competitive riding teams. We do compete in IDA and IHSA, and we do have 21 national championship titles under our belts with our equestrian center. Emory and Henry is a top college of distinction for equity and inclusion, and our Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and our Inclusion and Dialogue Center work every year and every day with students, faculty, and staff to make sure that Emory and Henry is a welcoming home for students of every background and to make sure that students on campus do feel that their voices are being heard. They do events and programming throughout the year, along with doing workshops to help students better understand their fellow students, as well as everybody else in the community. 
Emory and Henry has the distinction of being the only college in the entire country to offer a semester a trail program, which does allow students to take an entire semester of their year to go out and hike a portion or all of the Appalachian Trail and receive college credit for doing so. The pictures that you see there on the screen are the seven students who went out as part of the 2021 cohort. Four of those students were Emory and Henry students prior to heading out on the trail, but three of those students transferred to Emory and Henry specifically for this opportunity to go out on the trail. So even if you don't decide on Emory and Henry, although we certainly hope you do, the semester of trail program is still an option. We also have a remarkable outdoor program, as well as our outdoor adventure team who does go out and compete in things like kayaking, canoeing, and whitewater rafting, along with things like climbing. And we do offer a rock climbing wall and an indoor crag wall on our campus. Students sometimes wonder, well, where can I get a job or an internship with a degree from your school? This is just a small sampling of places that we have, have sent students for their internships and for many of them to get jobs once they graduate. As you can see, this includes places like AT&T, the Department of Justice, as well as places like the CDC or the United Nations. Some of Emory and Henry's distinguished alumni have gone on to be multi Emmy award winners, work in the US State Department, President Pro Tempora of the California State Senate, and perhaps my favorite on here, one of our alumni is the current CEO for the American Cancer Society. So you can go on to do amazing things in great positions with a degree from Emory and Henry. Emory and Henry's application process is incredibly simple, both this year and for next year. Emory and Henry has made the decision to continue to be test optional all the way through the fall of next year. And our application is free, both on our website and through the Common App, which means that the only thing you have to submit is the application itself, as well as a copy of your high school transcripts. We do work with students to do a generous set of credits, credit acceptances. So AP, IB, and community college credits can all be transferred to Emory and Henry. We do also offer academic merit scholarships. So as soon as you apply and we receive that high school GPA, you will be awarded an academic merit scholarship ranging anywhere from $10,000 up to $23,000. And those renew every year for all four years of undergraduate. So you could potentially earn up to $92,000 worth of total academic merit scholarship over your four years. We also offer smaller performance and affinity scholarships in things like art, rugby, honors, things like that. We also work with the federal government and the state of Virginia to offer several other grants and scholarships. People may be wondering in the current climate with everything going on, what are the chances that with my degree, I actually get a job in case this isn't resolved? 92% of the class of 2020 was employed or already in grad school within six months of graduation after this past year. So Emory and Henry does do our best to work with our students to make sure that they make that next step after graduation to go on to fulfill those hopeful goals and career ideas. This is the contact information for Emory and Henry, and we do currently welcome students to come and visit our campus, do in-person tours, meet with an admissions counselor, and get all of your questions answered. So if there is anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. And thank you again for having me tonight. Thank you, Rachel. And next up is gonna be our last college for this evening, and we are gonna hear from I'm Molly at Millsaps College. All right, thanks so much y'all for um, having me here today. I'm so excited to be with y'all. Uh, my name is Molly Tortorisi and I'm an admissions counselor at Millsaps College. So Millsaps College is a private liberal arts college that was established in 1890. Um, we are a Methodist affiliated organization, but that does not mean you have to be a part of the Methodist church to come here. We don't have required chapel hours or anything like that. We do offer a pretty sweet scholarship. So if you are a member of a Methodist church, definitely look into that. Um, we're located in Jackson, Mississippi. 
Um, if you're not familiar with Jackson, Mississippi, that's okay. Um, I moved here, oh gosh, two and a half years ago, and it has truly become a really sweet home to me. Um, what's really unique about Jackson, and I think really special about going to school in Jackson, is that when you come here, you know, we are the capital. We have a number of great businesses across the scope. Just here on campus at Millsaps, we are surrounded by five major hospitals. Um, so what's really unique about that is that you're not here in Jackson competing against 30,000 other students to find things like internships, um, you know, research projects, everything like that. There are a lot of opportunities to stand out in Jackson and as a student in Millsaps. So the average class size at Millsaps is going to be about 10 students. I mean, I know that's kind of been the um, vibe that we've seen with everybody before. And once again, we do this on purpose. There is a reason we do this. And that's because we believe that smaller classrooms are going to equal larger success rates in our students. Here at Millsaps, your teachers are gonna know you. They're gonna know how you process in the, in the classroom and they're going to be able to cater the curriculum in a way that best serves you as a student. So for example, if you're an auditory learner, our professors are going to be able to do everything they can to really cater what you're learning in the classroom. Um, so you really are going to receive a personalized education at Millsaps. Um, speaking of our professors, I really love our professors here at Millsaps and I could sing their praises for days. Um, their job and their goal here is to serve students well. 95% um, of our professors are at the top of their field, so their PhD or the equivalent to that degree. We don't do teaching assistance here, so you will always be taught by that PhD professor. And we also have an open door policy with our teachers. And I know some schools, you know, you're required to go in during office hours to meet with professors. But here at Millsaps, if there's a time that you want to meet with your instructor, they're going to do everything they can to make that happen. Um, a lot of times that may, that may look like 12 a.m. emails to professors while you're studying for a test the night before and you don't know what they're reading. I'm not going to promise they'll write back every time, but they really are open. They want to help their students succeed and do well. Um, we've got 32 majors and 47 minors at Millsaps. Those range everywhere from your sciences to your businesses, um, as well as investigative journalism, women's studies, English, math. There's just a really broad range of majors and minors here at Millsaps. We have four pre-professional programs, so pre-law, pre-health, pre-engineering, and pre-ministry. We also have five pathway programs, and basically, you know, what a pathway program is, is if you maintain a certain GPA, in a certain major, then you're automatically accepted into a program, um, a post-grad program. So for example, we have one with Ole Miss Pharmacy, Vanderbilt Nursing, UAB, UAB Nursing, and also one with ourselves. We've got two master's programs. The great thing about Millsaps is the fact you major in business, four years in business, one more year at Millsaps, and you have your MBA, which is a pretty sweet deal. Um, here at Millsaps, our curriculum is going to kind of surround four outcomes thinking and reasoning, communication, integrative and collaborative learning, and problem solving and creative practice. So for example, if you are a biology major, not only are you going to be learning everything that has to do with biology science, but you're also gonna be learning how to communicate with, well with people, how to think and reason through processes. This really helps students stand out to employers, which I know is crazy. You're probably thinking, oh my gosh, four years from now, um, but it does come fast and we really wanna prepare, prepare our students to stand out and be successful. We've got 50 plus organizations on campus and 12 Greek organizations. And the beauty of Millsaps is that if out of those 50, you do not find one that stands out to you, you're welcome to make one yourself. 90% um, of our students do live on campus. They just love that environment that we give them. And it's always fun to stay around and live with your friends. Um, we've got free parking, free laundry, and free printing as well for our students at all times. So we are a division three school and about 50% of our campus are athletes. Um, we've got 18 teams that range everywhere from football, basketball, tennis, swimming, track. You think of it, we probably have it. Um, what we like to, you know, the message we like to give to athletes at Millsaps is that we want them to have a you can have it all experience. We want them to be able to, you know, experience their sport, but also be involved on campus, hang out with friends, keep those grades up. We want that all for our students and we really set up that environment. Um, for students at Millsaps in a really positive way. Also, sporting events are just fun at Millsaps. Students are always hanging out at them. It's a great, you know, time to come together with friends. They've been called, you know, many SEC football games at times because people have such a good time at sporting events at Millsaps. So about 100% of our students do receive some form of merit-based aid, and that typically ranges everywhere from $18,000 to $33,000. 
And to me, I believe that there is a real value in a Millsaps education. Um, I've seen time and time again, students who, when they leave this place, they're guaranteed success because of the way that their professors have catered to them and just staff all around campus. Um, we really don't let people just float through the system and leave Millsaps. We're gonna do everything we can over here to make sure that they are successful and that when they leave Millsaps and in 30 years to come, they can look at their time here and say, I know where I am today. I know that I'm as successful as I am because I chose to come to Millsaps. And that's something we're really proud of. And I really think that speaks a lot with just some major success and accolades we've had. And we've had 19 Fulbright Scholars, seven Rhodes Scholars, two Truman Scholars, and one Goldwater Scholar. 95% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in a post-grad program within six months of graduating. We have the highest alumni salary rate in the state of Mississippi, and we've been recognized in Forbes and the Princeton Review. Also in 2019, we had 100% acceptance rate into med school programs across the country. So everyone from Millsaps that applied to med school was accepted. Also over the past 13 years, We've been well above the national average of acceptance into postgrad programs, such as um, anything from you know, law school to pharmacy, um, physical therapy, everything like that. And I really think that speaks to what I talked about earlier, our faculty, how invested they are in students. Um, one of the best things I heard is that every night when Millsap students go to bed or when Millsap's professors go to bed, the first thing they're not thinking of is their research or anything like that. What they're really thinking of is their students and how they can serve them best. So please visit our website if you'd like to apply or schedule a visit on campus. We are always welcoming students. We are going test optional this year. We haven't made a decision yet on what we plan to do in the future with test optional, but please let me know if you'll have any questions and thank you for having me here today. Hi, thank you, Molly. And thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Um, and thank you to our panelists for sharing some great information with our students. Um, when you guys close out of this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many different sessions happening. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions happening later this evening, as well as tomorrow. In about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com CTCL. Thank you all so much, and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening.